Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN headquarters in St. Petersburg, Florida, 8.30 a.m. Tuesday morning, first edition of the Morning Market Kickoff. I'm going to be in here every single trading day, 8.30 a.m. till 9, getting you started for the trading day, seeing what we have going on for the market ahead. Right now, a little bit of a surprise. We haven't had this normally. We got markets in negative territory to kick things off. Futures right now, you got Dow futures, negative by 61 points, trading 29,218. S&P's pulling back about 9 at 33.15. NASDAQ futures negative by 32 points at 91.41. We'll start things off. We're going to start it off, of course, record territory to end last week. We pull up the chart of the S&P's even last week. Quite an acceleration. Right at 3.45 p.m. Eastern time, you have the S&P spiking to a high of 33.30. And then, interesting enough, we actually pull back right on the 4 o'clock bar. And that's a, that's a decent pullback of about six points. You don't normally see that at the end, as in 4 p.m., but nonetheless, right near record territory. Monday, markets closed for the Martin Luther King holiday. We had futures open and the sell-off about 8 p.m. last night. You see the futures go from 33.23. We actually reach a low in the S&Ps of about 33.07 currently trading 33.16. We've caught a bid of about nine S&P points over about the last five hours from 3.30 a.m. till 8.30 a.m. right now. Checking in on the VIX. Haven't seen any upward pressure on the VIX lately, and there we go. We were actually above 13 briefly, but that's a slow pause, 12.93 on that volatility index. Checking in on some of the markets. We'll start things off. There's your Dow chart. You can see the jump in the futures. There's your open as of Monday evening, 29,294, and you see the sell-off just as the other indices to a little bit of negative territory. S&P 500, we covered. There's your jump between Monday, Monday evening, the sell-off in the futures, 33.16. NASDAQ 100, pretty similar territory. We sell off from about a price level of 91.72. We reach a low in the S&Ps of 91.16. The market's catching a little bit of a bid over the last five hours, as I mentioned. You have the NASDAQ 100 currently trading at 91.46. It's earnings season. We get Netflix after the bell tonight. We'll get into that in a moment. Crude oil. We were actually almost at $60, quite a spike at the end of the day on Friday. From there, we've traded lower, now under $58 as the volatility continues in that crude market. You have crude trading at $57.89. Usually, we get the EIA numbers for crude on Wednesdays with the markets closed federal holiday for Martin Luther King Day yesterday. I expect we'll probably get the crude numbers Thursday at 11 a.m. for the inventories. There's your gold contract. We caught a little bit of a bid last night when we had markets trading lower. You had gold up to almost 1570. And as the markets have paired a bit, gold now back to 1552. And the euro US dollar trading at 111.15. In terms of what else you have happening in the market, I mentioned it is earnings season. Halliburton out with their earnings, beating estimates on international demand, even with a $2.2 billion charge. So they beat the analyst estimates. Halliburton, higher drilling activity in international markets, help the oil field services provider blunt a hit from slowing North America that led to that $2.2 billion charge. Halliburton beat that estimate for quarterly profit on Tuesday. Higher drilling activity in international markets helped the oil field services provider blunt a hit from slowing North America. International markets have been a bright spot for the oil, oil field service providers in recent times as North American oil and gas producers cut back on drilling wells to satisfy investors seeking higher returns. Company swung to a $1.7 billion loss in the fourth quarter because of that charge. On an adjusted basis, the company earned $0.32 cents a share compared with they were looking for about $0.29. Cents. And Halliburton said revenue from North America fell over 30%. Still, though, $2.33 billion international markets, though, up 10% to $2.86. And to see how that is hitting Halliburton this morning, Closed on Friday, 23.96. We got a spike to 24.95. Halliburton's paired most of those gains back down to 24.36. Other news out there in the market. Uber just sold its food delivery business to, in India to local rival, rival Zomato. So they are getting out of the India food delivery business. 
Ride-hailing giant Uber said Tuesday it sold its food delivery business in India to its competitor. I believe this had been rumored in the last couple of weeks. The sale gives Uber a 9.99% stake in the Indian restaurant aggregator and food delivery startup. As a result, Uber Eats will discontinue operations and direct restaurants, delivery partners, and users to the Zomato app starting Tuesday. To see how that is hitting Uber so far this morning. A little bit of an effect, the market liking selling off those assets spiked to $35.99, currently trading right now, $35.72. Jumping back to headlines out there, $7.37, it continues to be in the news. I saw an article out there this weekend that Tom had forwarded me talking about that they are already discussing renaming this plane. That is all but assured, folks. I don't know how you fly this plane with that name in the sky once it does come back. If it does, it probably will. But they will be changing this name. But this story talking about Boeing in talks to borrow $10 billion with a B or more as the crisis for the 737 MAX wears on. Boeing's in talks with banks to secure a loan of $10 billion or more, according to people familiar with the matter, as the company faces rising costs stemming from the two fatal crashes. This month, they suspended production of the Troubles planes, and this stretches to the 11th month. A planned pause in production rippled through the supply chain. We have layoffs that we've been talking about for some of the suppliers. Banks that have already committed to contribute to the loan include basically all of them, Citi, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Wells Fargo, J.P. Morgan. And to see how that is hitting Boeing shares this morning, Boeing looking to trade a bit lower, actually, in quite a slide last week, right? I mean, they backed this up a little bit longer on Boeing for a little context, even putting it on a yearly really provides context because that's when things began, 446. We reached a low in August of 319, almost made it back up all the way to 400, and from there, volatility again, and just last, uh, yes, this is a daily, quite a day on Friday, as we traded from about 334 down to 324. Boeing, new CEO, looking to turn things around, but nonetheless, still facing some concerns. Other news out there, China says the coronavirus has killed now six people, spread between people, and here's what we know. Pretty interesting story, pretty uh, frightening to say the least. The death toll from a mysterious flu-like virus in China, and this is what is hitting markets actually over in Asia a bit. We have Asia, big time for traveling as they have holidays over there. Authorities very worried that that is going to begin to spread. So they're now up to six people from the coronavirus. The death toll from a mysterious flu-like virus in China climbed to six on Tuesday as new cases surged beyond 300 and authorities fretted about the added risk from millions of Chinese traveling for the Lunar New Year holiday. Around the world, airports now tightening security of travelers from China as officials confirmed that coronavirus strain is contagious between humans. The WHO called a meeting Wednesday to consider declaring a global health emergency. The outbank, which be excuse me, outbreak, which began in the central city of Wuhan, also sent shivers through financial markets as investors recalled the SARS outbreak, 2002 and 2003, killed nearly 800 people. Authorities have confirmed, firmed, as I said, 300 cases in China and six deaths so far in that city. Stay tuned, folks. I'm going to come back with another segment. We'll get into Netflix earnings coming up, as well as what else we have for the segment. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. 
The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Checking in on the markets. Futures in negative territory. We're going to jump over to Netflix. Netflix coming out with their earnings, jumping over to the chart. Netflix right now pretty much flat on the morning, putting this on a little bit of a longer time frame for some context. Netflix, talk about some volatility. As for the first time, they really begin to face some competition in the market. You saw Netflix trade last year from a high of 385 down to 252. And since that September low, Netflix now up at about $340, putting this on a shorter time frame. The spike last week to $347. And then what I love, think or swim, you get into the Analyze tab, we pull up Netflix. One day, expected move on Netflix, $23.20. You want to look for volatility on Netflix. You want to see what kind of volatility the market is pricing in, if you're going to be playing that options market especially. One way or the other, as in if basically if you do a spread, you get action on both sides of the market for Netflix, you're going to be looking for $23 in either direction. That is the volatility. And boy, oh boy, a $340 stock, call it, $34 would be 10%. So $17 would be 5%. You're looking at a 7 8% move priced into the part. Um, move of Netflix as they come out with their earnings. Jumping into some of the Netflix options, just for instance. So right now we're sitting on January 21st. If you're looking at even just the options that are expiring on Friday, this is where, again, the Thinkorswim platform, you get in here, you're looking for, and this is where, 24, this is the implied volatility. Now, this is the one day expected move, which is today. If you want exposure through Friday, you're looking for almost $25 in movement of Netflix. And you can see how you're paying $23 in movement just for today. Talk about paying for some volatility in this stock. But as you would expect, Netflix, of course, Disney. We'll get over to Disney in a moment as well. But Disney, Disney Plus coming online. You have HBO. You have NBC announcing the de details of their streaming service, Peacock, last week. Uh, let alone Amazon Prime, the giant out there as well. But $23 today, but you can see that as you go out, you're paying for $23 for one day, but you can go all the way out to February 14th, and you're only looking for $31, et cetera, of volatility. But to see how these price out, we're right now trading at about $340, and there's your $340 strike price. The bullish, as in, uh, excuse me, the calls, right at around $13. Now, again, this is going out to January 24th. 1275 you could buy a call basically at the money of 340 similar price to buy a put 
So you're paying, if you want both sides, you buy a put and you buy a call at the money. You're just looking for an explosion of price in either direction. That's where you get this one day expected move or whether that's where you get this $25 it set number of volatility priced in because basically you're buying a call, you're buying a put, you're paying 13 here, you're paying about $13 here, that would be 26 and there is the price that you're paying for that volatility. So we get Netflix after the bell, should be interesting to see what they have to say. Checking in on some of the other competitors before Netflix comes out, Disney, they have had quite a run since they announced, and to put this in context, their Disney streaming service, I believe this was back in April when they originally announced the price tag of it. They were at $6, $7. Interesting enough, I just saw the notification chart jump up today from my Netflix billing. $14.16 to be exact that I am being charged for my Netflix price. Seems a little expensive when you hear that Disney, I believe it's going to be um, 6 or $7. And if you get their bundle package which is hulu and espn plus i believe that's 13.99 and so you're talking about a bundle for disney at the same as netflix doesn't mean you can't have both but 14 dollars 16 cents netflix price is kind of creeping up but look at that run for disney made it all the way up to 153 they go live with their disney plus streaming on november 7th the day that they announced they had 10 million subscribers already on Disney was November 13th, quite a spike. We actually extend those gains up to 153.41, and Disney just kind of paired that a bit from some of that exuberance in the market. Checking in on Amazon as well. Amazon, that high back in June or July, July, excuse me, uh, 2035, Amazon gotten quite a run recently. That acceleration, day after Christmas, what do you know, right? Everybody brought out all their presents. Amazon makes it above 1900. We've paired some of those gains back to 1864. And even CMCSA, Comcast, quite a run for them recently, making recent highs up to 4774, price of Comcast. Checking in on some of the earnings that we have going on this week. We had a big week of airline, excuse me, airline earnings as well. So we'll start it back up with today, Tuesday. We also get TD Ameritrade after the close today. United Airlines after the close gets in the action on the airlines as we begin. We'll go on to the other days of the week. We still have banks reporting. First Bank Corp, lots of banks, lots of smaller banks. We got the big ones last week. We already talked about Halliburton earnings. They were out before the open. Drilling down to what else? Capital One Financial, they're coming out. Wintrust, Marine Max, jumping over to Wednesday. See what we have on the calendar. Alaska Air, Ally Financial, Abbott Laboratories. This is before the open, Alaska after the market close. Again, more banks, Enterprise Bank Corp, Baker Hughes, Energy Stock, they'll be out. Fifth Third Bank Corp. It's amazing when you go through these earnings how many banks there actually are in the terms of smaller banks that even don't even get recognition in the market. You see the number of banks, Bank Corp, Bank Corp, Bank Corp, Financial, Financial, all over the place. Financial services, quite a sector in our country. And there is Netflix as well. Maybe that's Wednesday. We'll have to check that out. They're listed as Wednesday. It is possible. We'll get the details on that. I thought it was today. And Thursday, we really get into a plethora of the airlines. American Airlines, before the market. Southwest, before the market. JetBlue, before the market open as well. Again, more banks mixed into that as well. Scrolling down for names that jump out. Also, Comcast, before the market. Intel after the market this is on thursday freeport mcmoran before the open on thursday and to wrap it up for friday american express the biggest one on friday i believe as they come up with their numbers before the open yeah some more banks mixed into the picture but jumping over to some of those airline stocks we'll drill it down on a shorter time frame JetBlue, quite a chart for all of these. The fees that these airlines have been able to take in, pretty remarkable. 1921, just off of the all-time, excuse me, the yearly high for JetBlue, 1993. United, trading about 89.70 right now. And even as we look towards American Express on Friday, AXP, 
quite a run for these credit card companies as boy oh boy 131.52 eclipsing the 52 week high that we made back in July and if we put this excuse me on a longer time frame I mean check out the run that it had from the market lows of new uh, excuse me Christmas Eve in 2017 you were trading at $88 you have American Express now at 131.52 quite a number Stay tuned, folks. I'm going to come back for the final segment. We'll wrap things up, talk about what we have on tap today. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. One more check on the market. We got futures kind of hanging right where we started off the program. Dow futures negative by 71 points. S&P futures negative by 10. NASDAQ futures negative by 32. You see the S&P chart up there. Just kind of hanging out where these were in these lower levels. 33.14 on the S&P. Jumping over to one thing that I want to mention. We talked about Asia. We talked about the coronavirus. Pretty remarkable. I got Asia up here at the top. Check it out. Nikkei last night down nine tenths of a percent. Shanghai 1.4. HSI 2.8 percent. That having to do with Hong Kong falling more than 2 percent. Leading losses following a downgrade from 
AAA-3 to AAA-2 on Monday as they have their rating cut on Hong Kong as they continue to slow. Other news out there, what we have going on, check it out, folks. Right after this program, we got Larry Pezzavento coming up live with Trade What You See. And, of course, a week from tomorrow, Larry will be in there with subscribers to Fibonacci 24-7, a 90-minute webinar with his subscribers. He just put out a weekend report. He also put out a video of the S&P and gold this morning that got published early. I encourage you to check it out. The topics he's going to be covering, a plethora of talk, topics over 90 minutes with his subscribers. This workshop will be archived. Sign up. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can sign up for whether it's a 30-day, six-month, or a yearly. All of those come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Great time to sign up as Larry puts out that report on the weekend. And also, he's got new videos already out there. And as I mentioned, those webinars, that webinar archive will be available whether you can attend live or not. But a week from tomorrow, 4 till 3, excuse me, 4 till 5.30 p.m. One more check on the markets. There's your Dow 30. You see we are 29,208. There's your S&P 500, 3314. NASDAQ 100, all the markets catching a little bit of a bid off of the lows. Crude oil, not so much, still under $58. There's your gold contract at $15.52. Also, Tom O'Brien just with a new issue of the gold report this morning as well. He's got a couple of buys in there as well if you want to check that out on the front page of TFNN or right under newsletters. Appreciate you joining me, folks. I'll be back tomorrow morning, live at 8.30, every market day. And stay tuned. We got our man Larry Pezzavento coming up live at 9. I'll be back at 10 o'clock with Tom, live programming all day at TFNN. Thanks, folks.